This photo sort of reminds me of a line in the original Star Wars movie where Obi-Wan Kenobi says to some stormtroopers, these are not the droids you're looking for. Well, this is not the photo I was looking for. I actually wanted to get a shot of something like leaves or berries or a person or something with snow streaking past the lens. We don't get snow very often in Oklahoma, and so I wanted to kind of capture a nice little snowy effect where there's you can see something in focus, the subject, but then there's also some snow streaking past. I I've, I didn't really know if that's possible, but I've done it with raindrops, and I figured I might as well try it with snow. Well, there was a series of problems associated with that. The first problem was snow falls slower than rain. Okay, the solution then is to leave the shutter open. Now, if you're taking a shot of rain, you can have a shutter speed of like 180th of a second or or even faster, and you'll still get these nice rain streaks depending on how heavy it's raining. So you can get uh, you can use a wide aperture of fast shutter speed, and you still get that rainy effect. Well, the uh, the snow falls slower, so you have to leave your shutter open longer to catch the snowy streak. So I figured maybe a half a second or even one second would work, but that meant another problem, which is that snow especially snow on the ground, reflects a lot of light, even if it's cloudy and overcast. There's a ton of light. It's, it's like the entire surface around you is a giant light bulb shining light up at you. And that's a big problem if you're trying to have a slow exposure. So the solution then is to limit the amount of light entering the camera. To do that, I stopped my lens down as far as it would go, which is F16. That meant, unfortunately, a virtually no depth of field uh, on any given photo I take unless the subject was right next to the lens, which was a trade-off I was going to try and make and also lower the ISO to 100. So I did everything I could to limit the amount of light entering the camera. And that left another problem, which was because of all the bright snow, I was still only able to get a shutter speed of like an eighth of a second. And it, it just wasn't slow enough to get what I was looking for. And there was another problem too. My tripod was terrible. It was just awful. It's this cheesy little $10 sun pack tripod. If you ever see a sun pack tripod, run the other direction. They're terrible. I've never seen a good one. Spend the money on a nice tripod. I keep this one with me just as like a backup in case I happen to need a tripod, but it's almost worse than no tripod. It's like one foot tall, it's this abomination unto photography that was barely any help at all. But I'm kind of getting off on a tangent here. I, I finally, after nothing worked to get the shot that I was looking for, which was not this duck, keep in mind, I finally decided to go with the classic OSU standby, which is ducks at Theta Pond. Everybody goes to Theta Pond and takes photos of the ducks and the geese. Because why not? It's a nice little scene. You got this nice pond and there's always ducks and geese around even in the winter. And it makes for a good photo. So I figured, well, I might as well just go get a picture of a duck like everybody else. And that's fine. Um, it's not going to be the most interesting photo, but it's better than no photo, which is what I was coming up with on my other attempts to get what I was really looking for. This is actually a bit more interesting because there's snow, and so rarely do you get a photo of a duck at Theta Pond with any type of snow. So if nothing else, at least I got a photo that's a little less common because of the snow. And to get this photo, as usual, I had to get super low on the ground. I shot this at F1.8 to get some depth of field because I wasn't super close. So I needed to, in order to get any depth of field, I had to shoot with a wide aperture because I couldn't get really close to his duck, or otherwise he would fly away. And I actually ended up getting some snowflakes. You can see in the upper right hand corner, there's some some uh, snow that's kind of blurred out in the background and maybe a little bit in the foreground too. And so it's not what I was looking for, but I kind of like it. It's kind of neat. There is one thing to note about this photo though, which is the duck's eye. If you look closely at the duck, you can see his eye. And the original photo, it was so dark, you couldn't see the eye. And it's really important to get the eye of your subject if you want to connect with whatever it is you're photographing, if it's an animal or a person. If you can capture that, that individual's eye, that's like a window into their soul, as you may have heard. And so I needed to find a way to get the eye of this duck visible. Well, that's one of the benefits of shooting in RAW. You never know when that extra data will come in handy. My camera got everything I needed for the eye. 
it, it was just lost in the shadows. If this would have been a JPEG photo, I kind of would have been up a creek here. But thankfully, I was able to go into Lightroom and use my adjustment brush to bring out the detail of the shadowy portion of the duck's head right where the eye was. And yay, there's the eye. There's nothing magical about that. It's just uh, there, the, the photo data was so dark that uh, it wasn't really usable. But thanks to the magic of RAW, which all of you should be shooting in, <laughs> You can get that data back if you need it. Now, you, you might think, well, Rod, the files are so big and I don't know what to do with them. You never know when it'll come in handy. And for a while, I shot in JPEG when I first upgraded to DSLR shooting, thinking that, oh, who needs the RAW? I, I, I don't need to clog my computer up with all those RAW files. Well, time and time again, I keep coming back to the same lesson, which is you might as well shoot in RAW. Space is cheap, but you can't go back and get data from your photos that's not there because you shot in JPEG. Now, the the real lesson that I want to take away from this whole photo excursion here is to be prepared. I often talk about how gear is not super important. Like I shot this with, as you might have guessed, my D200, super old camera. But sometimes you just need the right gear. Now, the real solution to get the actual photo I was looking for would have been a neutral density filter, which is basically like putting a, uh, sunglasses on your camera, and it limits the amount of light you can uh, that's coming in, and it allows you to use uh, wider apertures when, uh, when you're on a, a bright day. It, it basically lets you shoot more creatively with wider apertures and a slower shutter speed. I didn't have a neutral density filter, so nothing would have worked. Really, I should go buy one, and uh, it's something that you might consider as well. But the, the the point here is sometimes you do just need to buy something or rent something to get the shot you're looking for. So I'd like to go back and try this again with a neutral density filter if it ever does snow again and the conditions are right.